Well, good afternoon. This is Reverend Essie coming at you on April 1st, 2017. And no, I'm not playing jokes, and I don't like it when people try to play them on me. I'm coming to you today to talk to you about tongues. Tongues are very important. I know a lot of Christians who have yet to speak in tongues, but I am asking you now, if you've never done it, practice, try to do it now. All you have to do is start speaking in an, an unknown language. And I know that it's hard for us to explain to you how to do it, but all I can say is try a language. Pick a language that you may have been interested in when you were younger and, and act like you're speaking that language. And I've had this work for other people. As you are pretending to speak that language, Chinese, Spanish, whatever you're doing, the Holy Spirit will take over at your attempt, and He will change it to the language He wants you to speak in. There have been people who spoke in Taiwanese, never been there, don't even have it in their blood system. There are people who speak. I've spoken in tongues in English language. I, uh, I've spoken in tongues uh, in um, Cherokee language. Um, I've spoken, I'm trying to think... Um, Spanish. I've spoken in Spanish. I've said words in tongues in Spanish that I've heard before, but I don't interfere. I just continue to speak because I let the Holy Spirit do his thing. You know, I've spoken in different languages, um, and you will too. And it says in the Bible, in the book of Acts, that when, when the disciples start speaking in tongues, everybody understood one another. Every man heard his own language. So I, the best thing I can tell you is um, I hate when people say fake it till you make it because you're not faking it, but act like you're, make up your own language. Start, just start speaking. Okay. And God and the Holy Spirit will take over. He's not going to sit there and just look at you. Okay. <laughs> He's not intimidating. He's not going to, the Holy Spirit will not make a fool out of you. He will help you. And you could just start, um, just start, uh, some people, they use the same words, the same sounds over and over, like mama, 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 abba, ba, 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 ba. And some people just start speaking, hallelujah. Okay, so you make up the language until the Holy Spirit helps you and catches on to it. And the next thing you know, you're speaking. The reason I'm talking to you today about speaking in tongues is because it's very imperative to your salvation. The Holy Spirit knows what you need. He knows things that you need that you don't even know that you need. And when you speak in tongues, you're speaking to God and the devil does not know what you're saying. I'm sure you've heard many people say, watch your words. Don't run your mouth. Watch your words. Watch what you say. Be careful what comes out of your mouth. Well, I'm telling you today, don't run your mouth. Speak in tongues. The devil tries to catch us up in our words just like they tried to catch Jesus up in his words. So from now on, when you think about it as much as you can, I mean, don't don't cause it to become a burden to you, but speak in tongues. You are actually allowing the Holy Spirit that dwells within you, the God in you, you're allowing for the Spirit of God in you to connect with the Spirit of God that sits on the throne, the creator of all things. If you want to know about tongues, we know James 3, 8 says uh, the tongue no man can tame. So why try, Why should you try to tame your own tongue? I know people that says, uh, I know people that say, well, I'm trying to watch my tongue hung by the tongue. I have the book here. In fact, I read it. It's a pretty good book, but you got to just, you cannot tame your tongue. Everybody at some point is going to say something they have no business saying. And everybody at some point is going to speak something into their lives that should not be there because they didn't watch their words. James 3, 8 says, no man can tame the tongue. And uh, Psalms thirty one twenty says, there is strife of tongues. Okay, let me go to Psalms thirty one twenty, As I just wrote the titles. Um, part of the word. I want to see what it says in Psalms thirty one twenty. Um, and it says, then, uh, uh, let me see, let me start. Let the lying lips be put to silence, which speak grievous things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. 
how many times have we had this happen to us? There are people who speak evil against you because they know you're righteous and they'll do anything they can to try to take you down and, and, and make you look bad. It says, oh, oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man. Pride. Notice man has a lot of pride. Thou will keep him secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. God will hide you from the tongues that are against you, the tongues that try to kill your character. God will hide you from that. And all those that try to kill your character and to try to make you look bad will pay for it. They will pay for it. I know some people that went through some things and 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 God helped them out okay and 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 they're almost worse now than they were before they before it started some people just never learn a lesson mark 16:17 let me turn to mark 16:17 all right it's a wonderful saturday god is good it's been raining lately but hey i'm just glad to be alive amen it's a new day mark 16:17 says and these signs shall follow them that believe. Notice, and these signs shall follow, okay, I like to put a comma there, them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues. Now, watch this. How can you speak in new tongues and still have devils in you? That tells you something right there. The Holy Spirit's not going to speak in devil language. God has a special language that he has made for the men that he has created, and he wants you to use it. All right? It says right there in, in Mark 16, 17, and they shall speak with new tongues. And it says, and, and, and in my name shall they cast out devils. You may, well, as you're speak, you don't realize as you're speaking in tongues, you may be casting out something that's been trying to bother you and, 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 and mess you up in your life. You may be casting out some of those uh, traps and setups that the enemy has had for you. Speak in tongues as much as you can. Okay, Acts 2, 3, and 4. Let me go to Acts 2, 3, and 4. I hope you're writing these down as I am speaking them. Write them down. Take notes. I buy notebooks on sale. You heard me say this before in one of my other videos, but I do. I buy notebooks on sale, and, and I use like one, one notebook per month, and I just make notes. Every day, I'll, at the top of the page, I'll put April 1. Next page, April 2. Next page, it will, of course, put the year as well. And I have notebooks on top of notebooks on top of notebooks stored up, okay? And um, I go back to them every now and then, and I see where some things that I have written in those notebooks has come to pass. Where was I at? Acts 2, 3, and 4, chapter 2. And it says, and there appeared, on, no, I'll start with 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven, see it came from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. See, began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. See, notice it says, as the Spirit gave them utterance, he will, he will give you the words, the proper words to say. He will give you the utterance. It calls it an utterance. The Bible calls it an utterance. The Holy Spirit, if you start, you take one step, and I promise you the Holy Spirit will finish it for you. Oh, you're going to go through things. Your mind's going to tell you, oh, you sound silly. Oh, I can't believe you're trying that. Oh, who do you think you are? That's, that's stupid. Only stupid people try that stuff. That's crazy. You believe in that mess? Okay, but as your mind, the more your mind, okay, you know, the Bible tells us we have to take those thoughts captive. The more, the more weird thoughts come in your mind, the more you should speak. Overcome it. And the more days go by, the more weeks go by, the more months and years go by, you'll be glad that you did. Amen. Acts 19.6. Tongues is very important. And I've, ha I've had uh, grown folks, older folks say they never spoke in tongues. And I, I that kind of, 
you know, they're good with great with the Bible, but I, I don't know how you never spoke in tongues. Acts 19, 6. And it says, And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. And when he went into the synagogue, he spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things uh, concerning the kingdom of God. See? Paul laid hands on them and they spoke in tongues. Let me start with verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came on Ephesus and finding certain disciples. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. They, these people were telling Paul, we, don't, we never even heard of the Holy Ghost. We don't know what you're talking about. And he, and this is sometimes how I feel when people tell me they never spoke in, <laughs> never spoke in tongues. How can you teach something? How can you teach about something that you haven't accepted yet? Oh, that'll preach. In verse 3, he said, and he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. Notice repentance in Jesus Christ. And then it says, Then said Paul, John, then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him that is on Christ Jesus. And says, When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon him, then they got the Holy Ghost. Okay, see, these people said they never, we never even heard of the Holy Ghost. And this is what a lot of people nowadays remind me of. When you ask them, have you ever spoken in tongues? They're like, um, no, what is tongues? And there's some religions that don't even allow you to speak in tongues when you go into their churches. Get it? Religion? I, I didn't say uh, Christian. Uh, there's some religions that don't even allow you to speak in tongues in their church. So... As I say, let's not run our mouths. Let's speak in tongues. Amen. Practice. What's the best way? I, ha I had a, a teacher in, in a Bible school ask us one time, what is the best way to learn how to do something, anything? I think we were on a prayer. We were, we were on our, a prayer um, study at the time. He said, what's the best way to learn how to pray? And the answer was, practice. So I'm saying this and ending this like this for you. What is the best way to learn how to speak in tongues? My answer to you is practice. God bless you. May God bless you and help you in all of your areas, all of the areas of your life in Jesus' holy name, Yeshua HaMashiach. Reverend Essie signing off. You can write me at Revessi at me.com. God bless.